Hi, I'm Peter Brock, and people have often asked me, with the background that I've had in racing and, and being involved with the design of the Corvette and various race cars, that what was the background and the reason for the Corvette? Because it seems rather illogical that a large manufacturer like GM, who's used to producing thousands of automobiles, would decide to build a limited production sports car. And like all great projects, it all comes back to individuals. If you look back in American history, we had some great sports cars back with the Mercer and the National and the Stutz, but those cars disappeared and it wasn't until World War II when the GIs came back uh, with the little sports cars like the Singers and the Jowetts and the MGs that we got a new sense of interest in driving and fun to drive. And if it hadn't have been for Harley Earl and realizing that there was a whole new possibility in creating a different market for an automobile and going to Watkins Glen in 1951 with the LeSabre sports car, which was a, a total spaceship, not anything like anything that people believe the sports car should be. But he wanted to find out what it was like, went there in 51, wowed the crowds with the cars, also saw what sports cars were supposed to be and decided that he would build a sports car at GM. And it wasn't just a matter of building a, a new automobile for a new group of people, but also testing a whole new process for building cars in low production with fiberglass. So that was another reason for getting this thing going. The first car that uh, he did, the, uh, the 53 Corvette that uh, was shown at the Waldorf Astoria early in 1953, it was an absolutely beautiful car. It wowed the crowd, but it was really a parts bin special. It didn't really have any performance. It had the standard six-cylinder engine of the time, a, a very anemic two-speed automatic. So it, it didn't impress anybody in the sports car community, either on the West Coast or the East Coast, where things were really heating up in this market. So it really, the, the car was almost a failure within, uh, within General Motors management. They, they couldn't build enough of them, uh, a few hundred of them really. And it wasn't until Ed Cole dropped the, uh, the small block Chevy in the 55 that really things took off and it came back to being a real sports car. So again, it's the personalities, the true believers in the idea of a sports car and creating a new image for Chevrolet that, uh, that the Corvette came to be. Even with that, when the first car showed up at uh, the Waldorf Astoria in early 53, it was Zora Duntoff who had come over to the United States who had already raced for Porsche and for Allard and saw the potential of the automobile and uh, went to General Motors, convinced them that he could be the leader of the, uh, the sports car culture in Detroit because there wasn't any. Detroit was an area that didn't have any great sports car roads. People didn't understand the whole concept of what a sports car should be. So Zora Duntoff became that, that leader of the idea. But it was that combination of Harley Earl to understand that there was a possibility of finding a new niche market, new materials, Zora Duntoff and telling them what a sports car should be. Ed Cole coming up with a V8 engine that really made the idea click. The problem was is the car didn't sell very well. Ford also had seen the possibilities and Virgil Exner at Chrysler had also seen the possibilities. So the Corvette didn't go over well at all. It didn't compete with the Thunderbird. Chrysler didn't uh, capitalize on the, on the car that they were doing. Ford did so with the Thunderbird, and it was a huge success. So management really wanted to cut the whole Corvette program out. That combination of those four people, Harley Earl, who saw the potential, Zora Duntoff, who knew what it should be and came in as a leader of the Corvette project, Ed Cole's V8 engine, which gave performance a whole new meaning in American sports cars, and of course, Bill Mitchell, who decided that he would go totally against management and build a new Corvette. So in the book that I've written on the Corvette explains that whole history of how this came to be. You know, with all the sidelights that we did with Zora's Duntoff uh, racer uh, Sebring in 1957. 
So if you look through the book and you can see all the original sketches, I mean, they had ideas for a mid-engine Corvair uh, engine car, which uh, Ed Cole had also been responsible for. So there were lots of ideas before it really came down to what Bill Mitchell decided what the new Corvette was going to be. So if you're really interested in the whole history, there's a great book on this, Corvette Stingray, Genesis of an American Icon, that really explains why the Corvette came to be and all the, all the prototypes that almost made it and didn't make it. Uh, all of these people, who they were and what they contributed, I think you'll really enjoy the story. It's a great adventure in automotive American design. So contact us for it and we'd be glad to send it to you.